What we've acquired this time around, we've acquired our assets at a, at a, at a forward yield of 10%, uh, given the cost of equity at, at about 9% and, and gearing at roughly uh, around 85 depending on uh, what the uh, 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 yield curve is doing. Uh, that implies a weighted average cost of capital of uh, south of 9%, requiring a 10% even after setting of our asset management, uh, asset management fee of 30 basis points. Uh, it really implies that it's uh, significantly income enhancing. The uh, guidance that we've put out of between 7 and 9% does not include the impact of these acquisitions. Uh, I suppose investors can work out the numbers for themselves. If you work out on, on a billion rand uh, weighted average acquisition of uh, uh, north of 10% uh, at the funding rate of uh, combined of about 9%, you can work out the numbers in terms of what that growth uh, is that would kick in there for the, for the B units. But uh, certainly um, uh, assuming transfers before uh, December or by December, you're looking at growth north of 20, 20% for your B unit holders, so that's, we believe that's a huge amount of value that that sort of thing would represent to, to unit holders. Um, what have we acquired? Um, our strategy has always been, we've got 175 properties, that's the strength of the Pula, the, the number of assets that we hold. Uh, going forward, obviously, as we grow uh, the size of the fund, we're looking to increase the average size per asset and these acquisitions do exactly that. Uh, we move from an average size of 2,500 uh, uh, square meters to 3,000 square meters. That's excluding the 16 properties we've sold. I mean, if you bring those into the fold, then you're probably already looking at an average of 4,000 on the portfolio. That's quite significant, uh, uh, you know, from where we were last year. But most importantly, I think the numbers to note is that on average, the size of the asset we've acquired is 11,000 square meters. Uh, and on average, uh, the, the, in rand terms, that's 100 million per asset that we've acquired. So we're graduating from about 12 million on average uh, per asset to on average about 18 million. Quite significant in our lives. We have to increase that uh, sort of average size of our asset without compromising the diversification that's ingrained in the number of assets that we have. Uh, and we continue to hold a portfolio across South Africa. We're still in all the nine provinces. Our exposure for, uh, uh, to Gauteng has uh, somewhat decreased from about 70% uh, to about 66%. Uh, but that's a move that we welcome because we buy retail in outlying areas and that's exactly what's, what's contributed towards that. Um, from a, uh, uh, from a, a, a sectorial diversification point of view, we retain our sectorial diversification. Uh, what's happened is we've gone more defensive in that we've bought more retail than uh, any other S class. So that's increased our, our retail exposure from uh, roughly 50 to about 55%. Uh, given that nature of our retail, again, where we're buying very simple, no frill uh, type assets, uh, defensive assets, between 70 and 90% uh, tenanted by national uh, uh, tenants, uh, uh, as a rule, in terms of our criteria to acquire. But most importantly, if you look at the type of tenants that trade out of our centers, they tend to be uh, your basic food guys, or basic clothing guys, uh, and as well as hardware guys uh, that, 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 that are doing so well in these rural areas, especially because people are expanding and increasing the size of their ho homes and that sort of thing. So we've seen good turnovers come through. Uh, trading densities are quite nice. We're renewing leases. Um, so yeah, we believe the portfolio is, uh, is, is well positioned to, uh, to deliver to unit holders.